Well, to continue with the discussions on solutions, you will recall that in the last class we had discussed ideal solutions and there were several properties of ideal solutions that we said and for instance, we had said that suppose we have um, for, for ideal solutions, we had for the things that we had shown for ideal solutions if you recall, we, ha we had plotted the partial pressure versus partial pressure and the total pressure versus the mole fraction right. And what did we find? Please remember whenever we are plotting for this class, this is not a standard convention for this class just to avoid any confusion, we would like to plot the mole fraction of the more volatile component in the x axis. With that we plot the partial pressure of component 1, partial pressure of component 2 and the total pressure over the solution. Now, since this is the more volatile component, what do you expect? Naturally, the saturated vapor pressure of component 1 will be higher as compared to the saturated vapor pressure of component 2. So, therefore, we find that at x 1 equals to 1, suppose this is p 1 saturated, then for x 1 equals to 0, this is going to be say p 2 saturated. And we know that for ideal solutions, what is the, the what is Raoult's law for ideal solutions? Just to recollect that Raoult's law is just the Lewis Randall rule for low to moderate pressure where the fugacity term can be replaced by pressure, right. So, the, la so the Raoult's law, if we write it down, the Raoult's law for, for ideal solutions, this was x 1 p 1 saturated, this was equals to p 1. So, since we know that, that this particular uh, p 1 saturated, this is nothing but a function of temperature and this particular plot, this is done under constant temperature conditions. So, naturally p 1 saturated becomes fixed as a result of which what do we find? We find that p 1 is proportional to x 1, right. In the same way, what is p 2? This is nothing but equals to x 2 p 2 saturated. What is x 2? Remember, we are, uh, we are dealing with binary mixtures. So, for binary mixtures, P 2 equals to 1 minus x 1 into P 2 saturated. So, in this case also we know this is P 2 saturated minus x 1 P 2 saturated. So, in this case also we find that P 2 it is inversely proportional to x 1 right. So, therefore, if we plot say P 1 as a function of x 1, what do we expect? We expect to get a linear plot like this right. This plot is p 1 versus x 1. Same way if you are plotting p 2 versus x 1, what do you expect? We expect to get a plot like this. This plot is p 2 versus x 1. All these things we have discussed in the last class. Fine. And, and what is the total pressure p equals to? It is obviously p 1 plus p 2. So, what is it? It is x 1 p 1 saturated plus 1 minus x 1 p 2 saturated, which gives you as x 1 p 1 minus p 2 saturated plus p 2 saturated. So, what does it imply? The curve of p versus x 1 that should ha that should have an intercept of p 2 saturated at x 1 equals to 0 or in other words p equals to p 2 saturated at x 1 equals to 0, p equals to p 1 saturated at x 1 equals to 1. So, therefore, what does it imply? The p versus x, x curve should be a linear plot extending from p 2 saturated to p 1 saturated. So, this was what we had obtained for an ideal solution if you recollect. For again I would like to like to repeat that this whole thing was for low to moderate pressure. where f can be replaced by the pressure term fine. So, therefore, for this particular case we found out that this is the situation and this is the law which governs ideal solutions. Again I would like to repeat that we had already discussed that ideal solution model is applicable for solutions over a very narrow range of conditions if you recollect. I had already mentioned the range of conditions for which ideal solution model is applicable and very frequently we come across as chemical engineers, we come across solutions which are non-ideal and, and 
that can occur when the molecules are not similar in size the intermolecular attraction between say a a and b b components it is not similar to the intermolecular attraction between a b components and so on and so forth this happens very frequently often this happens what do you expect what are the things that you expect should happen first thing is in that particular case can we directly write down just in this particular form can we write down this particular equation p 1 is proportional to x 1 this should not happen when it is a non ideal solution. So, therefore, what will happen we find that there will be either the, the partial pressure will be greater than that calculated from the ideal solution model or it will be less than that calculated from the ideal solution model. And remember one thing for every solution ideal or non ideal at x 1 equals to 0 we this particular equation is sorry very sorry at x 1 equals to 1 when n component 1 is in excess we will always have p 1 equals to x 1 p 1 saturated or in other case under that condition p 1 always approaches p 1 saturated. So, for even for any non ideal solution also for the excess component we find that the Raoult's law is applicable when the composition of the excess component approaches unity that is an universal truth that always happens. So, under ideal conditions also even if we have a negative or a positive deviation from Raoult's law we will find that at the extreme cases under this particular condition Raoult's law will be applicable for component 1 it will also be applicable for component 2. I had also mentioned if you recollect that for very low concentrations under that condition also we find p 1 is proportional to x 1, but under that conditions as I told you the proportionality constant is not equal to the saturated vapor pressure of that particular component. If, if, you, if you extend this particular uh, linear portion you will find that the intercept is at a different point as compared to p 1 saturated and we had found it that and we had told and rather we had termed this particular condition as an infinitely dilute ideal dilute solution. And for such ideal dil dilute solution we had found out that the proportionality constant it is equal to the Henry's constant of component 2 in component 1 or vice versa. So, we had dealt with two types of ideal behaviors one was ideal solutions where both the components obey Raoult's law when it is in excess quantity and ideal dilute solution this is particularly applicable for those particular components in solution which do not remain in the phase of the solution when it is in large excess. What do I mean? I mean say suppose carbon dioxide in water what is the phase of the solution liquid. Carbon dioxide when it is in much excess the solution does not remain in the liquid state. So, therefore, carbon dioxide does not remain in the phase of the solution and therefore, for such situation we find that the ideal dilute solution is applicable for the solute part which is carbon dioxide and ideal solution model is applicable for the solvent part which is water in this case right. So, therefore, just like we have deviations from ideal solutions we will also have deviations from ideal dilute solutions. The method of dealing with the deviation from ideality is the same for ideal solutions as well as for ideal dilute solutions. What do we observe? We observe that the curve it deviates from ideality just as I have shown in a better representation here it deviates from ideality and it can either be positive deviation or it can be neg negative deviation. For positive deviation the total pressure calculated is greater than that which should have been obtained for Raoult's law for negative deviation the total pressure is less than the sum of the partial pressures right. Now, how to account for this you will again I will say that for Raoult's law this was the law which was applicable. Now, what to do for a non ideal solution for everything remember we, we again and again resort to ideal gas behavior why because it has got a sound theoretical basis in the kinetic theory of gases. So, for gases what do you do? We find that for gases we have a relationship like P v equals to R t 
which implies what does it implies? This implies that suppose we plot P v by R t as a function of temperature say we should be getting a straight line at 1.0. For most of the situations what do we find? We find that usually the graph is something of this sort and it keeps on deviating from ideality in this particular way. So, so we find that P v by R t it deviates from ideality sorry this is pressure it deviates from ideality at high pressure and at low temperatures all these isobars are for different temperatures. So, for what did we do? We found that the P v by R t term it deviates from ideality and therefore, we had uh, we had incorporated a correction factor which is termed as the compressibility factor. What was the compressibility factor? It was the actual volume occupied by the gas divided by the ideal volume which we it would have occupied had it been ideal under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. So, what is this? This is nothing but V actual by R t by P for 1 mole of gas or in other words what is z equals to? This is nothing but P v by R t for the real gas and therefore, what did we do? This was the ideal, ideal gas equation right and for real gas what did we do? For real gases we just modified the equation by incorporating a correction factor z in this particular case. In the similar way just take it, taking note from the ideal gas equations here also we try to do a similar thing. What is the similar thing? This is the case for an ideal solution. So, therefore, when the solution is non ideal what should happen? Very simply just to keep matter simple we can simply incorporate a correction factor here. The correction factor is conventionally defined by gamma and it is termed as the activity coefficient right. So, therefore, in order to account for non ideal behavior what we do we simply incorporate or modify the Raoult's law by incorporating a correction factor gamma and you will recollect that if we are dealing with higher pressures then in that case we will be modifying the fugacity expression by incorporating this particular correction factor, this particular correction factor gamma. <coughs> so, therefore, this is the way we try to do or rather we try to modify the ideal solution model which is pretty simple and can be uh, obeyed by several solutions. We try to modify it just by incorporating gamma. So, therefore, now in this case what does my vapor liquid equilibrium become? The vapor liquid equilibrium if you recollect we had already told you that it started with F i L for component 1 is equal to F i V. For low to moderate pressures usually remember for such conditions usually the gaseous mixtures behave as ideal solutions. and that is quite a rational thing. Why? Because the ideal solution model if you recollect it had its genesis from the Amagat's law of additive volumes which are obeyed by ideal mixture of real gases right. So, therefore, for most of the cases we can write F i v equals to P i which is nothing but y i p right. What is F i l equals to? had the solution been ideal it would have been x i p i saturated since it is not ideal we will have one gamma i here. So, therefore, the what happens for low to moderate pressure non ideal liquid solution and we, we usually have a ideal gaseous mixture. Remember ideal gaseous mixture does not imply a, a mixture of ideal gases it may it may implies a ideal mixture may be of ideal gases or of real gases. So, for this case what will we have we will be equating this two or rather we will be equating these two expressions what do we get we get y i p equals to 
gamma i x i p i saturated agreed so therefore we find out that if we really want to find out the vapor liquid equilibrium from this particular condition then we have to encounter an additional term gamma and if we can find out this particular additional term in terms of some known measurable properties some known thermodynamic relationships then definitely we can use that particular equation here once it is incorporated here then the calculations of vapor liquid equilibrium they become similar to the ideal solutions and i will just uh, i'll just recall recall that whatever different types of problems that we had dealt for the case of ideal solutions are applicable for non ideal solutions there will be bubble pressure calculation bubble temperature calculation dew pressure calculation and dew temperature calculations just as we had discussed tx is uh, known py has to be found out py is known px has to be found out and so on and so forth just the way we had done and for everything we have to start with referring this particular equation and the only hitch which we have here apart from whatever we had done for ideal solutions is calculation of this particular gamma this is the only new thing that we have incorporated in order to account for non ideality in the liquid solution situation so now let us see how to find out gamma in terms of known measurable parameters what do you expect where with what parameters should gamma be related let us analyze and find out see what happened because the solution has uh, shifted from ideal to non ideal behavior first thing which has happened is it does not obey raoult's law let us jot down one by one what has happened the first thing is again i'll try to i try to emphasize that we're dealing with low to moderate pressure why because because repeatedly i am referring to raoult's law not to lewis randall solution or in other words i am referring to partial pressure total pressure etc instead of fugacities that is the only reason if we are going for higher pressures i'll be talking about fugacity instead of pressure so therefore for low to moderate pressure what are the things which happens if the solution was ideal what would you have expected obeys raoult's law you agree with me what was the second thing naturally if it obeys raoult's law pi equals to xi pi saturated third thing is if you remember we had found out some temp property changes of mixing what did we tell under that condition we had we had told you that delta v mixture was equals to 0 or in other words x sigma xi vi bar minus vi that was equal to 0 where if you recollect vi bar is the partial molar property of component i in solution since everything is in liquid so i am not putting this particular l superscript it is implied and, and this is the molar volume of the same component under the conditions of same temperature and same pressure as that of the solution similarly we had found out delta hm equals to 0 we had found out delta um equals to 0 what else did we find out delta gm was that equal to 0 if you recollect that was not equal to 0 we found out that delta gm was sigma xi delta gm it was nothing but rt sigma xi ln xi and delta sm this was equals to minus r sigma xi ln xi we had derived all those things and i would also like to recollect if you remember that when we were dealing with mixing of uh, ideal gases we found out that the entropy change was mixing was given uh, given by this particular equation when we had devised a reversible path for calculating the entropy change and we had calculated the entropy change for mixing of some ideal gases so this was exactly the expression that we that we had obtained now tell me one thing this whole thing was for ideal solutions for non ideal solutions what are the deviations that you would expect naturally it will first is does not obey raoult's law quite natural 
as a result what do we have E i equals to gamma i x i p i saturated and naturally what are the other things that you expect naturally in this particular case see the volume there was no volume change in mixing phi because definitely the molecular sizes and the shapes were similar in the two components or in the n number of components which were there. So, in this particular case when it is behaving in a non ideal fashion naturally the molecular sizes and shapes should not be similar in that case. Okay. So, therefore, quite naturally delta V m will not be equal to 0 expectedly delta H m will not be equal to 0 delta U m will not be equal to 0 similarly delta G m will not be equal to this it is just the same thing if I write it down. So, none of these things should happen right. What should happen then under that particular condition? That particular condition we find that the molecular sizes and shapes are not equal as I was telling. So, delta V m is not equal to 0. Definitely the intermolecular in interactions between molecules of uh, the component A and the of component A and of solution A B are not the same. So, naturally, naturally when they are mixing there will be either some absorption of heat or some uh, 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 rejection of heat quite naturally. So, there will be some it will be accompanied by a heat of mixing that will not be equal to 0 and so on the other things follows. So, what does it imply? It implies that definitely uh, it means that for real solutions there will be a non zero component of the properties of mixing. And this particular non zero properties arise because the solution does not behave ideally. You get my point? If the solution would have behaved ideally, then all these properties would have reduced to this. They are not reducing to this just because the solution is real and not ideal. So, therefore, there has to be some amount of excess properties of all these particular extensive properties that we have written down and these excess properties are coming just because the solutions are real. Again we collect the real gas and the ideal gas behavior for that particular case what did we what did we say? We said that just because the gas was not real what came up we had defined this equation and there had come up a series of residual properties or departure functions if you recollect. And if you will also be recollecting that and they were they were shown by delta p star or delta m star whatever it is better uh, whatever you wish you can you, you, you can write it down. These were the departure functions which was the actual properties minus the ideal gas properties at same temperature and pressure and we found out that each of the residual properties are related to z quite naturally because z z has been introduced to to consider real gas behavior and these uh, uh, residual properties have come up because the gas is real and not ideal. So, therefore, there should be some relationship between the residual properties and the compressibility factor and as a result of which we were we had tried to express each and every residual properties or departure functions whatever term you wish you can use in terms of the compressibility factor z right. So, therefore, in a similar way is it does it not occur to you that the behavior of non ideal solutions can be uh, predicted or can be defined much more easily if we say that since the solution is not ideal since the solution is real. So, therefore, it should have a set of excess properties defined as m e or p e in whatever way you wish to define the property of a solution. So, therefore, we find that just because it is real it should have a, a set of excess properties. It should have an excess volume v excess it should have h excess it should have u excess and similarly definitely it should have g excess it should have x excess. Why does it have this excess property? Because the solution is not real. So, therefore, how do we define v excess? Quite naturally it should be the actual volume of the solution minus the volume of the solution had it been ideal right 
and therefore, or in other words it should be the volume change occurring in the solution due to mixing minus the volume change which would have occurred had the solution been ideal. We know that the volume change which occurs in ideal solution is 0. So, naturally your excess property is nothing but the volume change on mixing right. So, this should also be I. So, in the same way we should be able to define each and every of the excess properties that we have uh, that uh, rather each and every excess property of the extensive properties that we are dealing with. And somehow we sh there should be some relationship between gamma and the set of excess properties. And definitely that should give us some hint about estimation of gamma in terms of easily measurable properties right. So, therefore, what do we do now when we start dealing with non ideal solutions? We have we have defined just to account for the non ideality of the solution, we have defined a set of excess properties right. And we find out that these excess properties they arise just because the solution is not ideal. So, therefore, let us have a proper definition of these particular excess properties how do we define this excess properties then? Naturally, if we define an any particular property with p, the remembering that p should be re referring to any extensive property. So, therefore, and when we are denoting the property with the capital letter, it, it refers to the total property. And <coughs> under that condition, the excess property p e, it, it should be for it should be equal to the difference between the actual property of the solution minus the property which the solution would have had it been ideal very important under the same conditions of temperature pressure and composition. And just like we have defined a total excess property definitely we should be in a position of defining a molar excess property as well agreed we are dealing with solutions. So, therefore, for each component we should be in a position of defining partial molar this is the molar property minus the partial molar property of rather it is better if, 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 if I write the ideal solutions at the i at the bottom let, let me write it down as i that will be better. So, therefore, this should be equal to p excess p bar excess under the ideal condition right. This is p by agreed. So, therefore, just like we have a total excess property, we have a molar excess property and for each component we have a partial molar excess property which is the actual molar ex excess property partial molar excess property of component i in solution minus the partial molar excess property of component i had the solution been ideal. So, what do we find what have we done in the process can you tell me in the process again unfortunately for you we have defined a set of another set of property list. These property list they are known as the excess properties and excess properties I repeat it is the difference between the actual property of the solution and the property which the solution has had it been ideal under the same conditions of temperature pressure composition. And remember one thing departure functions excess properties etcetera they all refer to extensive properties ok. And therefore, just like we have total excess properties or total departure functions for real gases we have a molar excess property, we have a partial molar excess property. So, in the next class what we do? We try to express the excess properties or rather the activity coefficient in terms of excess properties and let us see for what comes out or whether we can find out activity coefficient in terms of easily measurable parameters.